Hello, everyone, and welcome to Grip Lock Foundation Disc Golf's weekly podcast. I'm Hunter, joined as always by Trevor, and also today we are on location in Brody Smith's house. We know he's always going to bring hot takes, so he's on the podcast, ready to go. We're going to be doing the show a little bit different, um, mainly because we're not in Studio A. B, we're not going to be doing Trevor's trivia and make that call this week because I think we have enough to talk about without really getting into that stuff too much. Um, so first off, Brody, you're now wrapping up your first full year playing disc golf, um, both in general and also tournaments. Um, what, how do you think that went for you so far? What are some things you didn't accomplish you wish you could have? Uh, what are some things you did accomplish that you didn't think would happen in your first year playing? And what are you looking at going into next season? So some of the things I wish I would have accomplished would probably be get more experience on the pro tour. I think with the combination of COVID, the combination of line, it kind of shut my tour season down a little bit quicker. Now, obviously, I could have played MVP and GMC to get two more tournaments in there. But I feel like right when COVID and line happened, that was like in a real growth part, like a growth stage of my disc golf career. And it kind of just made it to where I was like going up and up and up and up. And then all of a sudden I almost kind of started going the opposite direction. Mm. And so that's kind of what made me, you know, not go to those last couple tournaments mainly because I was like, I'm, I'm not good enough and know enough about the disc in my bag alone to continue on. So had I feel like if those th- things didn't happen, I feel like I could have played a lot more tournaments. Uh, things I accomplished that... I'm kind of surprised about, I would say, is is picking up two wins this year. Um, The first one being with a pretty good competition. Coda and Bo, they pretty much win most tournaments in Oklahoma. So being able to go up there and and take one down with both of them in the field, that was awesome. And being in the final card with both of them on there and coming behind, you know, I think I was two shots behind or something like, I was either two shots or something like that behind, uh, late in the day or having to make a comeback kind of towards the last couple holes. So that was cool. And then the most recent tournament, that was more of a me coming in with being the favorite. I was the highest rated player and playing a brand new course with a bunch of locals that play out there. Being able to win that I think was nice as well because I think you need to be able to win in both scenarios. One where no one really thinks you have a shot, and then one where you're coming in and everyone thinks you have, you know, you have it in the bag. Mm-hmm. So that was cool. And then yeah, for this upcoming season, hopefully be able to do a full tour if, if everything goes well according to plan. And uh, really interested, you know, I'm trying to get my game to where I can be competitive at any course whether it's a long course, a wooded course, a course that requires really great putting, scrambling, whatever it may be, I'm trying to get my game to be well-rounded enough to where I can compete anywhere. So I'm going to be looking for that this year as, you know, tackling pretty much all these courses and, and just trying to see where I go. I have some goals set, but I would say most of my goals are more two years from now versus this okay. upcoming season. So this upcoming season is kind of like a, a feel it out on tour type of, a, type of a season, see kind of what it's like being out there fully. Yeah, I mean, I think I should have a good sense of all the discs in my bag. I should have a good sense of what throws I should be you know, trying to execute. And so now it's kind of just seeing where I need, where are some holes in my game and where I need to put more time in. And I basically just basically just go back to ultimate and I try to think like when I first started playing ultimate my freshman year in college what what was I trying to accomplish and then what was I trying to accomplish my second year as a sophomore and then Mm. what was I trying to accomplish my third year and I'm trying to kind of go on that same timeline and not rush things and get frustrated because I'm not where I want to be um and then also just realize that you know some things are going to come easier and some things are going to take a little more time for sure um so now a year ago, right now, you were still all in on golf, right? You were, you were still making golf a content. A year ago, right now, yeah, I think so, yeah. So and Trevor, you can probably answer this too because you have a lot of golf in your background. 
what would you say are some things, because obviously there's a lot of similarities between disc golf and ball golf. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, they're both golf at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. But what are some differences that you think you've noticed on the tour, whether they're good, bad, whatever, that you think either we can learn from golf or you're happy like this is different from golf and I think that this is a good thing? I think the biggest difference for me is the fact that there's no real stock shots. So Mm -hmm. in golf, you have 14 drives because most courses have four par threes, Mm -hmm. typical courses. So on those par threes, you're not going to be hitting driver. But on those other 14 holes, most of the time, you're hitting driver. Like You need like, yeah, like a 10 yard fade or a 10 yard draw. And you're, you're just adjusting a little bit of the line and... Each hole in golf, I'm trying to hit to my number. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying, like for me, I really liked like 92, 94 yards. That was like my bread and butter. So if the hole, let's say the hole was 400 yards, I'm trying to hit a drive that's just over 300 to get me to that 90. Where I think a lot of times in disc golf, you're just trying to throw it as far as you can because there isn't, there isn't really a number where you're like this is the perfect like you would never want to lay up to where it's a perfect full power putter throw right right? because that's like 300 feet right if someone was able to lay up to 100 feet and you're laying up to your full power 300 foot shot Mm -hmm. you're gonna crush that guy every time there's like this weird well in ball golf there's like this weird number usually between like like 80 and like 20 yards but like you don't even want to be stuck anywhere in the middle you'd rather be at like 100 yards than 30 because mm-hmm. you're better from there when you can take a full swing with the lob wedge than trying to hit some kind of chip like so the most similar yeah, thing in disc golf would be like when you have a full power mid versus a light fairway like that distance where you're, you're kind of up in the well air. it really I, I would say more so with you know if you had a 40 yard shot you're not able to hit it hard enough to generate the amount of spin for the ball to hit and have a reaction on the green. Mm. So it's almost more so like guys can hit 40, like I can sit there and hit a 40 yard shot and, and have it land between 38 and 42 yards consistently, but it's controlling that spin. So mm. if, if I have a full shot, like yeah. I have, you know, a 92 yard shot for me was like a pretty full, like 60 degree. Mm-hmm. So I can hit a pretty full 60 degree, degree and know that I can fly it 10 feet, 15 feet past the pin, and it's going to have enough spin to hit and then come back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in disc golf, there's not really anything like that of where you're really worried about how the disc is going to react to the green. I guess the big thing is if you can throw a putter into a green versus a high-speed driver, you're going to have a better chance of like not having a flare skip. Yeah, eliminating and the, the skips. And yeah. the there's, some, there's some angle stuff too with, with disc golf, with greens. Like you don't, if like there's a hillside, like, well, I don't want to land on hyzer into this hillside because then it's going to have a better chance of rolling away yeah. and stuff like that. But More it's like not, angle controlling. Yeah, it's not quite the same. Like in disc golf, you're right. Like you always want to be closer. Always. Yeah. And I would say it, it's almost reversed. So in golf, Going from course to course, you're not really hitting that many different shots off the tee and off the fairway mm. going into a green. Yeah. But based on the course, you might be hitting a lot of different chip shots. And like some courses, you're going to play like the bump and run. Some courses, you're going to putt off the green. Green speeds. Where yeah. disc golf, around the greens, you're pretty much every putt, no matter what course you're at, is pretty much the same. Yeah. But Every single course you go to, like we played a couple different courses while you guys are down here, there's very few times where you're like, oh, I've thrown this shot. Yeah. Like this right. exact shot. Where in golf, it's like, this is a seven iron. And then you go to some other course and you're like, this is a seven iron. And it's like the same exact swing. And so right. I think that's where, you know, does field work come into play? Is it important? Yes. But I think there's something to be said about getting a lot of practice on courses because there's very few times do you have just like the standard 330 foot straight buzz shot. Yeah, you might be practicing in the field. Where golf, it's like they're sitting there and they're working on their flight and all that stuff for very stock shots because they know when they go and play this course, they're gonna give they're gonna have six pitching wedges. Mm-hmm. So they're gonna have they really want to get their pitching wedge dialed in. I would say that's probably the biggest difference between the two. Yeah. Is it's, it's very unique. And that's why I think a lot of times you'll see like 
guys that have played courses multiple, multiple times have a massive advantage in yeah. disc golf. And in golf, it's not really there. You don't really see guys that are like, oh, this is his home course. The only course. thing you're going to know more in ball golf is like people will know the greens yeah. better. But that's Green speed and stuff. It. Green speed and breaks. And, the and breaks, nowhere to miss but and stuff. bottom line, yeah, it, like if you're hitting fairways, you're hitting fairways. Mm-hmm. It's not like... Not like, and there's not like lines. Like, there's a reason the, the term local route exists in disc golf. Like, that's not a thing really in ball golf. No. Like, <laughs> no one's like, oh my gosh, I didn't know you could just blast it over that tree. Occasionally, and- it's like, oh, you can cut a corner. Like, I didn't know you could do that. But, like, it's pretty self explanatory. Pretty much all those guys are figuring that out. Yeah. In their practice. And then you can just aim that direction, you know? Correct. And you kind of know your distance. So. Yeah. so, I think one question that got brought up, I actually don't remember. Someone brought up to you, I believe, of. When do you think disc golf, if ever, will overtake ball golf? Now, what the stipulations are on that, I don't know. Like, are we talking popularity? I mean, popular, are we talking like player money? Money? I feel like popularity would be the question, would be what they're... So, like, at what I point do you think, that, if ever, do you think disc golf would become more popular than ball golf? Never. Yeah, I don't think it ever happened. Like, never, ever, yeah, ever, no. ever. Do you, so, okay, so then the secondary question is, do you they're think... They're two similar sports. But, so... They are more similar, but I feel like to an average viewer, I don't know if the answer is never. Because I feel like the to the average viewer, watching a disc fly off the tee, get whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> he's getting free. Uh, watching the disc fly off the tee is more intriguing to an average viewer than watching a ball off the tee. Are you talking about in person? No, even on like coverage. Cause like the disc moves a lot more. There's more to watch. It's more visually. Appealing. I don't think I don't think you really get to see the disc move in, on uh, coverage. How so? Like if if there's a tunnel shot, yeah. right? Well, then the as disc isn't really moving. Well, okay. Well, if, <laughs> if there's like a flex shot, okay, like yeah. a tunnel shot where you have to flex it through. Yeah, yeah. I think the way they have coverage now, and I don't know if they can change it, but the way they have coverage, at least if I've seen, is you see the initial first throw. And it goes, and then once it gets to a certain point, it catch cuts cam. the catch cam, and then it finishes. Right. You don't really get, when you when you go from different perspectives like that, you, it's really, I think it's really hard to really see what, That's true. what That's happens. What's happened. I've noticed yeah. that as catch cams have become more popular, like, it's definitely helpful, but it takes away... Like, it, you, like, have to, like, reposition, like, oh, that's where that disc is flying. Like, that's how the angle it's coming in on. You, like, kind of lose track of it for a second. So, it's, re- makes, it's really good. It's I good think for ca- blind corners. Yeah, I think ca- and I think catch cam's really good for you just knowing, okay, that's where the disc ended up. And, and but it's, it's, I think it's a lot harder to figure out how it got there. Like, what was, what was needed to do to get there. Right. So, yeah. The you movement know? left to right yeah. and stuff. Yeah, like, the way, the way I view, uh. You know, I I just played this course like Waco, the first hole, the first hole in the woods where it's like a straight shot and then it's it kind of fades to the left. It's like an S. It's like a little S. Okay, yeah. Part, that par four. You know, I think a lot of times they they'll throw it and then as it goes, it goes to the catch cam, which is a blind corner, and then all of a sudden the disc comes around the corner and then skips. I feel like if you filmed it where it went and then the disc went out of frame and then as it goes out of frame now you pick it up Mm -hmm. it might be a little bit easier to grasp but but then it might not seem as smooth visually potentially but if the argument is in person then i would i would disagree with you completely because there's nothing like seeing rory mcelroy at five foot eight just rip into a, a ball and it just the yeah. sound, sa- the sound. That's that the other making thing. the argument in person. But the sound too is another thing. Disc golf doesn't have any sound. I mean, they have snap. It's nothing. I know it's not the same. Yeah, the sound of saying, iron being snow. hit flush is on. Like match. some drivers, it's similar to some... baseball. Like baseball is the most boring sport to watch on TV. But also, you get that crap. Yeah. But once you're there in person, and it's still boring. But it's still boring. But it does <laughs> add excitement. <laughs> it does add excitement. <laughs> you can't. Okay, but disc. I mean, baseball in person is more exciting than on TV. Well, every sport is more exciting in person than on TV. Yeah, I'm just saying. So like, I hate baseball both ways, uh, but I enjoy. I can go to a baseball game and enjoy myself. That's a good. I don't want to say I'd rather watch an NFL game in my house on a big screen TV. But is it more entertaining or is it more comfortable? Hmm. Because it's more entertaining if you have good seats. It's more entertaining. I'd rather watch. Here's the thing. I don't think I would ever be a season ticket holder. 
Okay. I don't mind. I think. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. And? I'm going to get to the point. So I think. I think you're right. I think like going to the game, like if I go to the Cowboys game or if I yeah. go to the Super Bowl or anything like that and you're in the crowd and you have the atmosphere and stuff, like that's why I didn't say college football because college football is 10,000 times better in person than on than watching it. Yeah. Um, but that's, the crowds are different. But I don't, I think I could enjoy it and, and like it, but I don't think the enjoyment is worth all the stuff that it takes to get there and do it. If that makes sense. I don't know if that's outside of the I realm. I mean, I'm just... Yeah. I mean, I'm just... You do, yeah, think about it. It takes forever to drive there. You gotta pay for parking. I mean, I, but I'm just saying, that's, like, consuming it. Yeah, sitting that's, there. Com- that's comfort. Like, like I'm saying, like, once, there. yeah, how you consume it. I think it depends a lot about the people around you, too, though. That's true. Because if you're, if you're sitting in a group... Like, if you go to a football game, I hit... Not... This is not, like, a... Whatever. I'm just gonna say it. But if I go to a football game and they're like, hey, yeah, you have box seats. Like, if it's, like, for a brand or something and it's, like, in a suite, it's so much worse than being actually in the crowd because half the people in the suite that you're with aren't even paying attention to you. They're watching the game. They're just here to hang out. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you like, you just feel, like, at that point, you feel like you're watching it, but you're removed. Whereas if you're, like, in... Then you might as well be at home watching your TV. Yeah, because you're so far away and, heck, you're looking up the TV most of the time to see what the heck you're doing. But I see what you're saying. Watching live disc golf is probably more interesting than watching it live on YouTube. Yeah. And watching live golf is definitely more interesting. However, if you want a full golf experience, it's way better to watch on TV because you get to see everything happening. A lot more where, where if you're on the ground, it's very difficult to keep track unless you have your phone out and you're like watching it yeah. on the your thing phone. About, the thing about the whole like watching ball golf thing is boring, like more boring than disc golf is like people that think ball golf is boring to watch on TV don't quite have perspective. Like if you Exactly. If That's you, what I'm saying. I'm saying you're just taking a random guy off the street, you're showing him disc golf on Joe Mez and you're showing him ball golf on NBC or whatever it's on. Yeah. Which one's he going to find more visually appealing? To me, it's disc golf because off the tee, the disc is doing more. There's more action. That's fair. There's more variance in what could happen to the disc midair. Whereas ball golf, when the guy hits it, you don't know until it lands. Oh, crap. That's in the bunker. Once mm-hmm. you understand a sport, then you're like, oh, shoot. Do you see the amount of spin he put on that? When I watch golf, like, I don't pick up on that. I'm like, oh, man. Yeah. That was a cool that, shot. I see what you're saying. That's, I mean, that's true. Like, that's if, a good point. If, like, you had somebody who had literally, like, no knowledge of either sport, never watched either, didn't even know that one was more popular than the other, and you put him in front of both, he's probably going to like watching disc golf more. And that's what I'm saying, is as, as if, the sport progresses and gets in front of more and more eyes, although, I feel as though it will be more, not maybe more popular, but more people who don't give a rip about either would rather watch disc golf, and so there it's going to gain more and more traction. You have to like, it has to be like a very objective showing of the sport, because if you've got some, like if you're watching the Ryder Cup, or like the waste management, and there's fans losing their mind everywhere, and guys fist pumping the, like in disc golf, the but, athletes have like no emotion. But we're not talking right now. We're saying at any point in the future. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So it's stuff like objectively, the, yeah, I agree emotion with that of the point. game is gonna come. A big is part it? of emotion is money. When a putt loses you $100,000, your gut's going to feel a lot different than when your putt loses you 1000 bucks. It's true. Look what happened today on this golf course. You were losing skins left and right. Yeah. You were emotionally drained. I'm saying if a guy's about to make a putt for a million dollars... That's something we've like, talked about before, though. Like, do you I'm think, fist pumping like crazy. Do you think that the top PGA Tour golfers are fist pumping and it has anything to do with money? Maybe not in their head, but of course it does. Some, some do. So, I think it's a couple things. So... When you win a tournament on the PGA Tour, you get a lot of money. You also get, I believe, exempt for two years, yeah. which is massive. For I'm talking a lot of about. People. I'm talking about in the moment, though. Yeah, I think I think it's all like that I think that all that stuff is built in. Like yeah. I think when like uh, I know I listened to No Laying Up for a long time, and when they would interview some of like the younger guys and stuff that would have a big win or something like that. They would talk about like going to sleep the night before and realizing if I win, I'm exempt for two years. Okay, but there's still so like, there's all still that stuff does build in. But then I also think golf does a way better job of building prestige around events. They have, yeah, there has there has this, and I think that's an issue. Like, that's an issue with disc golf right now is they're too often changing courses. They're too often the names are changing. 
We can get in a little bit in the name. I'm saying if Rory wins a major, when Rory wins a, wins a major, he's thinking, I just want a major, not I just won $2 million. Correct. Nice thing. 100%. Yeah. No, um, if, it, if we're talking about majors, 100%. I think well, that's typically, I feel like that's where it's most noticeable. Yeah. Unless you're not Rory. Unless you are, if you are a guy that has been grinding and is trying to make it, and all of a sudden, like Corey Connors, someone that has been playing golf for his whole life and then all of a sudden he went out of nowhere he just wins a tournament and now he knows like yeah. I have a job for two years I mean that's different yeah that like that emotion well even the money is life changing right now if I'm Ezra Aderhold which apparently it's Ezra Aderhold that's he corrected funny. someone on his Instagram that's never gonna catch on I'm still calling him Aderhold because everyone calls like him on his story no like someone DM'd him if I don't know it was, I saw a screenshot it could have been fake he said a video no, it was just, it, it, he put oh, he A-I-D-E-R-H-O-L-D. Oh, interesting. Regardless, let's say I'm at, I'm Ezra, okay? And I'm going to bed the night before D-Glow, and I'm in the lead. I'm not freaking out over the wind tomorrow, because the wind doesn't change my life. The money doesn't change my life. The prestige I get from the wind doesn't change my life. I think life. you are freaking out a You're freaking bit. out over the pressure, but I'm saying... I think you are freaking out, but there's not as much, there's not, you're saying there's a lot of factors, and there's not as many factors. Yeah. So you're still freaking out. You're freaking but, out nerves wise, but I'm saying it's not this like pinnacle moment. Like I just reached a mountaintop. This just changed everything for me. Boom, fist pump. Because I think once Tiger Woods does that once, now every win it's gonna get diluted. But that's still gonna have that same like gut feeling of like yeah. this is another thing my legacy. I think, I think my legacy. I think there's some people. I think what Trevor's saying initially is there are some people that. You know, no matter the, no matter what it is for, it could be for nothing. You know, it could be us three here sitting playing Monopoly and whatever the outcome comes, it doesn't change any of our lives. But if one of us wins, we could be fist pumping and beating our chest. Yeah. And there's going to be some people that don't do that. Right. I'm saying so right I think now, there's some Discord, people there's like that. No, there's like none of that. Yeah. And I think a lot yeah. of it has to do with being, it's a, it's frowned upon. Because I know, I know. I've gotten I've gotten so much trash for. Oh, I guess that's true. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. if I make a eighty foot scuba and I beat my chest and I sit yell something, like people yeah. are like, "Oh wow, way to mess up someone else's putting on a different green." <laughs> yeah, you ever heard of the tiger roar? You think that yeah. messes up people? So like, there's de- yeah, there's definitely a lot of people that think, and this is this is what's wild to me, is golf the proper and gentleman game and like we're better than you of what a lot of feel like disc golfers say we don't want to be like they take disc golfers are taking it to the extreme like way more than golf like golf is all about golf the roars all about that. the celebrates during the Ryder Cup man those players interact too with the fans like they, they want it it's wild that some of disc golf people fans don't want that and think that's bad for the sport and it's like I don't know, man. If I go and I watch something and I don't see any passion from someone, it's really right. hard for me to read. Atmosphere is what brings so many people in the sports. That's why during like COVID when there's no spectators, all the viewership's gone down. Like people are home, they can still watch it, but it's, it's just not as it's not as entertaining when you're right. not hearing the roar of the crowd. If disc golf has that consistently, like crowds going nuts and players in inter- like feeding off of that, it's way. College, that's one of the college things football's think. wild with no crowd. Absolutely wild. College like football bands. Yeah, it's terrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's what I you're saying. Like, like it's insane. Yeah. Like the only sport that the only sport I've seen that's better without a crowd, and I don't say I wouldn't say I would want it every single time like that is UFC. That's the only sport that I've watched. Just because there's not because Be- the fans are delusional. Because UFC. well, but I think to me it's because you get to hear the fighters talk to each other, which you would mm. never be able to hear. You get to hear coaches yelling at their fighters. You get to kind of feel that. You hear the punches. You hear it, the mo like the. Gr- it uh, does ruin walkouts though. Yeah, I, I love walking. No, I would never want to see a Conor McGregor fight without a crowd. Yeah, absolutely not. But I'm just saying there is like a little bit element that UFC has that no other sport has. Yeah. that I care about. Do you think that part of where disc golf's lack? I don't even want to say lacking the passion from the place. I don't think where I see what you're saying passion. It's like I don't want to say that they're just not expressive. Yeah. Okay. The expression. I'm not of passion saying. Yeah. I'm not saying they don't care. Yeah. They're just not expressive. Mm-hmm. Do you think part of it is? Like with the crowd, I think it's a lot off. of it because it's one thing you. It's one thing if you're yelling and shouting and everybody hears you. It's another thing if it's completely dropped. Like anytime you see Tiger Woods screaming and shouting and fist pumping, you can't even hear him. Yeah. Oh my! The, so loud. the way I was on the course this year was way different. Once there was no crowds, yeah, 
Because you have nothing to feed off of. Nothing to feed off of, yeah. and yeah, a lot more of it's it like changes your adrenaline. It's a lot more eternal. Like, but I think here's one thing: is like I've seen Paul win USCGC. Mm-hmm. I've seen him win Worlds. I've been like in person for these. When he taps out, which I think both of them, I mean, both of them by the time he's making his putt, the both ones I've been to, it's been over. It's like yeah. he's walking up to the putt, everyone knows that's he's different. Done. That's yeah. different. Mm-hmm. Now, a putt for the win, people freak out. But, I mean, it is a moment of like, he taps out the crowd, it's more of like a yeah roar and claps, and then he raises his hand, waves, mm-hmm. moves yeah. on. When he won 2014 Worlds, is probably his most expressive I've ever seen in winning worlds, and I think that was because he just won nuts. a playoff with a twenty-five foot putt. Mm-hmm. The crowd went absolutely like crazy, and it's not like I mean, pe- we've seen Paul plenty. They, like, people at home have seen Paul in videos. Paul is not a like in your face fist pump kind mm-hmm. of like flex on you guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But in that world, if you watch it when he tapped out, it was a both fist pumps in the air looking at the crowd. I think it. I think that's a big part is as the crowd grows, yeah. that comes with it. Because it, it's true. If you're out on the course, like if it's just me and you and we're shooting a video and I beat you on hole 18 and I start screaming like a maniac, I'm gonna look like an idiot. Yeah. But if there's ten thousand people drowning I mean, me yeah. out and I'm screaming, I'm gonna look like a freaking. I mean, us first the nation, we were going nuts. But we had a crowd. Yeah, we were going nuts. The crowd was feeding off it. So. Yeah, and I think there's also some things in place that that can. You know, some other factors that we were talking about, the money, the prestige, um, uh, just even having like reporters and press, like adding all those things change the, change the entire atmosphere. Um, not having someone right after you win, stick a microphone in your face and interview you. Yeah. yeah. I think, I think, you know, there's here's a lot, one, there's a lot of stuff that I think here's one big thing change with work. atmosphere that we've kind of talked about even this week some. That I think would be big for disc golf and could be implemented tomorrow is removing the accessibility to the pros. Mm-hmm. At, le- mm-hmm. at least, or at least controlling the accessibility to the pros. Mm-hmm. If you show up right now, a lot of times player parking and VIP parking is the same lot. Mm-hmm. A lot of times the warm up area is roped off, but then the walk from the warm up area to the first tee is not. If players go to other parks, you know, if they don't have designated warm up areas in some of the other parks, so players can come, people can come up to them then. During the round, you know, there's not designated fan areas. Mm-hmm. Fans are just kind of crowding around you mm-hmm. to where every single tournament I've ever been to, there has been issues where the TD or one of the crowd control people has had to tell you, like, I need the whole crowd to take three steps back. You know, are getting too close. You're inching up way too much. I need you to step back. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and then, then after, the immediately after over. the round, mm-hmm. it doesn't matter how you play. It doesn't matter if Paul just lost. Like, let's say 2014 when Ricky lost in that playoff that I was just talking about. I guarantee you people were coming up after and talking to him and wanting pictures and autographs. And I guarantee you Ricky was signing them and taking them. Because... He knows if he didn't, he would get flagged. If you're not, you're a jerk. Mm -hmm. That's the last thing Ricky would want to do. When If Paul loses in 20... What is it? 18 or whatever in Georgia. He, he like, made this comeback but never couldn't get to where he topped Ricky. I I was with him. People were asking for pictures and stuff. But the dude just lost Worlds. Like the, no, the, the, in Georgia, 2017? Maybe Bars. Oh, Bars, Bars was 2018, you're right, 2017. Um, but the Worlds is like the tournament. And, you know, for Ricky and Paul, especially during that era, they were the guys going into it. Mm-hmm. And you just lost it. You know, it's over. And you don't even have time to, like, let it settle. Like, you're just crushed right there. The guy just hit a putt in your face. You're crushed. And people are coming up and asking to sign it. And if you say, like, look, man, you know, not right now. I don't want to take a picture. You're blasted on Facebook as a jerk. That makes no sense. What it should be is the PGA is like, you know, here is the VIP tent or whatever, however they want to call it. It's a fan signing. Yeah, and then if a player wants to after the round, they show up there. That's where you meet them, get the picture, sign it, whatever it is. You know, if players are, you know, if the guy who just won, maybe that's a requirement. He has to go there. Every other player, it's their choice. I think I think it's twofold. I think one is on the player side. Um, you know, no. I, not that I've heard of, but I, there hasn't been any sort of like player si- safety issues happening. I think all it takes is one weird thing to happen for stuff to change real quick. Um, but besides the fact, I think from the player side, it would be nice for the players to be able to have the option, right? Like there's nothing in any sort of player contract when they go to a disc golf pro tour event that says they have to do anything outside of actually playing. Mm-hmm. 
like if the disc golf pro tour wants to add in like hey you have to do me media hey you have to do a fan signing or stuff like that that's something that they that the pro tour has got to discuss with the players but for most of these players they're only the only thing that they need to do is show up before their tee time play the round finalize their scorecard sign it and then leave that's yeah. it the other thing though i would say for and, and like you were saying i think some players it would be nice for them not to have to worry about man if i don't do that if i you know this guy coming up to me and tell him ask me to sign something and i don't do it like oh gosh what's going to happen it'd be nice for them just to not even have to go and get put themselves in that position that shouldn't be on the player especially with covid this year that was a big thing is even at tournaments where fan interaction was allowed players weren't supposed to be signing autographs mm -hmm. and they weren't supposed to be taking pictures as a fan, you were kind of told that, but there were so many players that felt weird about it that they broke it to where when, you know, and Paul was one of the person, people that he stuck to it. He was not going to do it. Yeah. And so, because part of it was also Discraft had told Paul, like, do not do it. And it was a, a player safety thing mm -hmm. because it's a, a COVID risk to someone hand you a Sharpie and a disc or whatever, um, which that makes perfect sense. But when there's players out there who are like, you know, this guy wants my autograph, you know, it puts a player in an awkward situation. Correct. The player shouldn't be the person having to look, you know, Trevor in the eyes and be like, look, man, I, I can't yeah. touch or sign your disc. You know, if you want to take a picture with me, I can do that. Right. That's the first time it, like, kind of mm -hmm. hit me of, like, it almost, because Paul would say no, and people would immediately go, like, well, so-and-so signed my disc. Or, well, so-and-so took a picture with me. Like, what am I, like... Yeah. Like, well, so and so did this. It, it was, you don't want to put your players yeah. in weird positions. And I'm sure Paul wasn't the only one. I'm sure Ricky was facing the same situation. Paul's just yeah. the only person I saw. And like every time it was kind of an awkward moment because Paul's like, what am I supposed to do? Like, I'm, I can't sign it. But then he's like, well, so-and-so did. Well, so-and-so did. And I would say, yeah, did serious. you have a point to say? Did you want to say no. something? Okay. No. So I would say on the other side, the, the flip side being um, the fan perspective of it, if you think about it this way, if I go to an event and it doesn't really feel like there's any sort of like, you can't go here. You can't do this. You can't. It kind of takes. And when we're talking about the prestige, it kind of takes the prestige away a little yeah. bit of it. And I'll give you two examples. One. Now I'm going back to golf. When I would go to like a PGA Tour event, right, and I would just get a normal access pass, I would really only be able to go on the grounds and be on the side of fairways, behind tee pads, basically anywhere where the ropes are. I got to be stay on the other side. So when I'd go to a PGA Tour event, I would be doing media for the PGA Tour. And they'd give me an inside the ropes pass. Now I'm in a position where I can get closer to the players. I can hear what they're saying. I don't have people in me. There, there's a separation between the two. Yeah. When I went to the Tiger versus Phil match, which going into it, they build it up as like, this is going to be a sick event. There's going to be barely anyone there. You guys are going to be up close and personal. Um, because I went there for a brand deal. But other people went, like, paid stupid amounts of money to be there. Mm -hmm. There were so many people there. Like, so, like 1,500 people. Which isn't really a degree. It's not a lot. Mm -hmm. But 1,500 people watching two people when there isn't any sort of, like, you can't go here, you can't go there. It was miserable. It was not fun. Like, mm -hmm. it, it, there was just no organization. And it just didn't really feel like we were watching something incredible. Yeah. You know? You go to a play and all of a sudden they just allow people just to go and, hey, sit wherever you want. And people are just like going up and sitting on the the stairs leading up to like the, the stage. And like people are like standing right in front of the stage and people are going. Like when you can just do whatever you want, it just, I feel like to everyone else, it takes it away. Yeah. yeah. It'd be weird showing up to a concert to see Lady Gaga and I pull into the parking lot and then all of a sudden Lady Gaga pulls next to me. Exactly. I'd be like, what the heck is... What the heck is... Yeah. And she walks in through the same door as you. I'd be like, yeah, exactly. I'd You're like, like holding the door open for her walking in. I'd be like, what is going on right now? Yeah. It takes a little bit of that, of and that's, that atmosphere. That's something I was going to say is like... That'd I feel a like a lot thing, of what we talk about, it would be. If I open the door for Lady Gaga. <laughs> I feel like a lot of what like Trevor and I talk about, and I've heard you talk about it a lot, and a lot of pros that express their opinions talk about, is making disc golf more professional or taking it to that next level. Yeah. But how is anyone else going to treat us more professional as players or an organization if we don't do it ourselves? If we don't treat ourselves as professionals, 
if we don't treat ourselves as a professional tour, and if we don't carry ourselves as a professional athlete or even media or anything, how do we expect anyone else to look at us that way? Mm -hmm. It's very true. I mean, it goes, we were talking about this the other day about like one of our main issues is we play a lot of our tournaments at public parks. So just anyone just can show up. There's no entry fee. They're not... Like when you don't pay to go into something, I feel like there's a different vibe. They're headed towards the pay for entry because I think and it's not a lot. Like no, five, just five like bucks. Five bucks would change because Ledgestone vibe. Ledgestone did that. You had to pay if you wanted to watch. You had to have day passes and stuff like that for parking. USDGC has done that in the past. Obviously, this year there was no spectators. Um, but I think that's also the reason the memorial is not on the pro tour this year. Because they wouldn't do it. Because they wouldn't shut down the park. Either couldn't or wouldn't. But that's what they cited. Yeah, they cited not being able to shut down the park mm. to the public. So that that to me says that that's the direction the pro tour is headed. Is they want full control over the venue to where they can shut it down. They should. They can do this. They can do that. But I do think the next step is regulating where fans can and can't go and. It's, to me, if I'm having like a Ledstone, Ledstone's the one just burned in my mind because I went there most recently this year. There's that warm up area right next to are the you, pro What track. are you talking about? Eureka? Or? Eureka. Eureka. Okay. Um, yep, yep. Right so, behind the tower. Yep. There's that warm up area. Mm -hmm. And then 75 feet away is the first tee. Mm -hmm. And in between there, there's no regulation. There needs to be a, a player be a roped, path. It should be a roped off yep. walkway to where, sure, you can line the sides. And if. Paul so walks into the first team, wants to stop, he has the right to, and if he doesn't, now you don't feel like, <laughs> Moose Man just brought a shoe in here, <laughs> yeah. uh, now you don't feel like a, he's being a jerk, because yeah. he's focused, he's walking the first team, whereas when you can come up and like tap him on the shoulder and be like, hey man, like you mind signing this, and like, obviously he saw you, now he's a jerk. I mean, you saw, like, it's not, it's not that awkward when we're out doing stuff like in practice rounds and stuff. Yeah, like yeah, today. yeah, that's like, completely different. We're out filming and stuff. But there is still a little bit of this, we're technically at work. Yeah. Right? And it's a different work. I get it. Like, if you work as an engineer, as a doctor, as anything like that, like, you're not looking for fans to, to make pay your bills. Where we are looking for fans to pay our bills. Right? So, it's, it's a part of the job. But when you look at other sports and stuff, they have training facilities. They have... Uh, either, you know, whether it's a sport team, they have their own facility that fans can, maybe sometimes like football, spring training, uh, fans can come and mm -hmm. watch. But in golf, it's a little bit different, but most pro golfers are members at extremely high prestige courses. And one of the first te things that these courses, like these cl country clubs, will tell you if you become a member is, hey, so we have some very high, you know, celebrity or whatever people here, we just ask that, you know, you treat them like everyone else. Right. Right. And so it's kind of a known thing of where if I show up to practice chipping or something and John Rahm is at on the chipping green because we're both members of this high prestigious, prestigious club, I'm not going over to John Rahm and chewing off his ear because he's at work. So this isn't me saying like, don't come up to me on the practice, you know, if I'm practicing and stuff, that's fine. It's, it's, it's a different vibe, but it's one of those things that right now in disc golf, I feel like everyone feels like they have the right, mm -hmm. like they deserve to do it. Yeah. And it needs to be more taken with a little bit more of a, an understanding of what the player is doing. Like you said, player might've just had an absolute miserable tournament wow. and the last thing they want to do is unfortunately that's what I want to do is sit and maybe talk to some complete stranger. Yeah, well, there's it, a, it's 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 sad, but it is what it is. There's a big thing right now on that I've seen on social media and just in disc golf in general amongst the fans is like as disc golf shifts and that professionalism, you know, the players are more separated from us type vibe. The fans get defensive and kind of start playing the well, they would have nothing without us card. You know, yeah, which is really the wrong direction. But see, that's I, that argument is kind of irrelevant to me because at the end of the day, people are going to watch disc golf. Right. Like that's the thing to me is there's all these arguments about like like Austin Hannum today had his disc golf hot take number four might have been yesterday of it all needs to be under one roof and go live like all coverage needs to be under one roof and go live is that the time for it I don't know maybe not we've talked we've discussed this before I think we're headed that way. But people in the comments are saying, like, if it's not on 
insert any disc golf YouTube channel, Joe Miss Central Coast. If it's not on Central Coast, I'm not watching. That I'm like, not, yes, you can, true. you can say that all you want, but I think that that might represent 5% of the fans. 20% might say that. 15% of the people who said that are going to be watching. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, if you want to go watch it, this is the way you have to do it. At the end of the day, if you want to go watch yeah. the best players in the world in person, this is the stipulations you have to follow. It's not like it's not like out of nowhere, oh, well, now there's no fans here. Yeah, right. and people are making, I mean, there's a good point to be made where like most football fans, like guys that watch football or basketball, they're not playing. Like we all watch football. We're not in any sort of football league, right? right? But golf, I again, going to golf is the most common. Most people that watch golf play golf. There's almost, uh, the percentage of people that follow golf and don't play is probably it's so low. Is, yeah, it's probably so low. So this idea of, hey, I work Monday through Friday. I'm not going to spend my time Saturday and Sunday watching golf. I'm going to go out and play golf. That's completely fine. But if you really were interested in it, I know like when I was out practicing and stuff, I would have my phone up. up. Yeah. I would be, I'd having right. the live stream up, watching it while I'm practicing. Right. Well, that's like, like, there's nothing wrong with that. We're not looking for people to stay at home. Yeah. If you want to go. And the other thing too, is like, depending on when the tournament is like, you could go and play two rounds of disc golf from eight to noon and then get home and then be able to watch, watch one leaders. to five and watch the leaders come in. That's what most people do in golf. Right. Most people aren't watching the guys that are 15 strokes back that are yeah. turning off at that's eight literally, in the morning. Yeah, that's literally, like if you go to a golf course on a weekend, like those guys all play in the morning and then they all go into the restaurant or wherever to watch 100%. the rest of the golf. Like, that's yeah, or, or hang out in the clubhouse. Yeah. yeah. But that's what, that's what I'm saying is like, yes, do, are fans the ones that at the end of the day, give the disc golfers and really any professional athlete a career? Yes. Yeah. But the thing is, the fan job isn't an exclusive job that you have to like apply for. Like It's not like there's some regulation you have to meet this to be a fan. Right. The professional there is. Right. So fans, it's not like they're easily replaceable by any means, especially in disc golf. You know, We need to keep growing that base. That's why I don't know if right now is the time. To go fully live, I don't think I don't, it, know. I don't think it is the time, no, no. but I think they need to do more things to slowly go in that way. So maybe, yeah. so maybe the live, like the final, like a good step would be like the final card, the lead card is never filmed for next day coverage. So they have Chase card, and then they have third, like say they have three companies that want to film. You have Chase, third and fourth card all filmed. If you want to watch the the leaders, you have to tune in live. So that'd be something that wouldn't necessarily take away next day coverage, but it would take away next day coverage for a specific yeah. group of people. Yeah. Because the whole idea... And right, that's where Austin Hannum multiple times, that's what he was saying Yeah. In, in his hot take. Yeah, I think a lot of people are just, they quickly jump on this notion of like, oh, you're just going to destroy blah, blah. And it's time like, to boycott. Yeah, but the thing is, is like, even if people boycott it, the amount of people that would start tuning in to the live and the live only... Uh, it'd be worth it. And one of my, you know, I have multiple reasons why I think this would be good. Uh, cause apparently sometimes when I say my opinions, I just don't, uh, fully explain why I think things would be good. So in this instance, if you put it all in one umbrella and you, and you basically are trying to get people all to watch the live, you got a couple things. One, your viewer numbers will go up. There will be more people viewing it. So with a high high viewership number, the first thing that comes to mind is sponsorship money. So selling, hey, we're getting twenty thousand views every day from Thursday to Sunday. Do you want eighty? Like, what's what can we get for eighty thousand dollars over these four days, or eighty thousand views over these four days? Versus, hey, we're getting fifty thousand views. What can we get for two hundred thousand dollars, or two hundred thousand views? The sponsorship money coming in for those different views is going to go way up and that money is going to go to the Disc Golf Pro Tour who then can put that money to the purse, can put that money into making courses better and all the stuff. It's in the hands of the tour now. Correct. Versus production companies where that money, I don't know if that money ever finds its way back to the Pro Tour. Yeah. And then the second thing I would say is you get everyone talking about it at one time. So mm -hmm. most of us are all social media savvy by now. Yeah. Trending, the algorithm, having a bunch of stuff go, having a bunch of people all of a sudden talk about it 
and talk about it to where someone could tune in. So I could be on the disc golf course playing and someone could like text me and be like, bro, are you seeing what's going on right now? And I'm like, what are you talking about? And like, dude, this is, you got to turn it on. I can turn it on and watch and now I'm a part of it. Yeah. I can tweet crazy. about it. I can do all this stuff where right now you have, let's say we have a hundred thousand people that are watching disc golf coverage. You have 20,000 watching it on Sunday. You have 60,000 watching it on Monday. You have 20,000 watching it on Tuesday. You have 20, like we're separating. It's all spread out. We're all spread out yeah, versus really if we had 100,000 all in one day, all talking about it at one time. Now we're going to get on to now more we're, explorer pages, more, possibly even trending if something crazy happens. More yeah. people talking about it. Yeah. yeah. That's super overlooked. And that's been super noticeable in the, the Discord, like with the yeah. live chat. We're like, it, that it, is such a yeah. fun way to consume disc golf that people are missing out on. Like, you can go into the comment section and see what think people have said. But, like, in real time, commenting on shots and hearing what other people have to say about it. And seeing, like, when an ace happens better. and then out of nowhere, it's just... And you feel, when you see something happen live and oh, you were there to witness it, you feel like, I just got to see something as it happened. Yeah. It's, it's like, like oh so much... I, just watching this year, Hunter and I were, at, we were actually at work and we had the MVP coverage on in the background and Paul threw that ace in. And I was like, that's so crazy. Like, I didn't see that in instant replay. I yeah, watched it happen. We both just, like, lost It feels mind. so much more rare and ex and special when you see stuff happen yeah. live. Well, yeah. People and just do not, like, understand that, I guess. So they just don't rate it as highly, maybe, as people that are used to consuming, like, live sports maybe mm -hmm. do, I guess. I think the... F I, personally, I think the first step that needs to be made, and this should be made this year, I don't, I'm shocked this hasn't been made yet, is National Tour, Pro Tour, Majors... Why are we paying? Why are not we? Why is the Pro Tour and the PDGA paying media companies to cover their events that those media companies are now monetizing? I think for they're. Them? I think they're slowly going away from that. I think uh, they paid potentially a media company to film the the women's, but I think from what I've heard, they are starting to have bids. But I don't Good. know if I like the bidding process. I feel like the bidding process should be at a certain number. So instead of like, I don't know exactly how it works, but I think it should be like, hey, if you want to film Chase Card, again, I do think that lead card should be Disc Golf Pro Tour. I, yeah. I feel like that's an easy fix. Everyone still is getting coverage, but I think that should be Pro Tour. I, it doesn't make sense to me that there's you're watching live coverage and there's eight cameras on one group. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I also, especially if we're talking about like, Hey, we should be having, you know, the, the people that are coming at me being like, Hey, you don't deserve to be on feature card. We need to get other players on feature card. They should be all on board with spreading cameras out and getting more players on camera. Mm -hmm. Like you can't say that I shouldn't be on feature card because other people deserve it and they need to like get limelight and then also say, no, we want eight cameras on Lee Card. That makes absolutely no sense. Yeah. Like the more we can, sh the more shots we can show, the more players we can show. I the better. I personally like. I get where the argument is coming from for post round coverage. I think that that's the only thing I have that I would be scared of of cutting the cord right now of like saying we're going only live for ch Lee Card. Um, would just be the reaction from the audience initially. So what I would say is we do it live only. If you want to watch it that weekend, you're going to watch it live. And then two weeks later on the Disc Golf Network, the Joe Mez, Central Coast, whatever it is, coverage is released, post-produced. I well, think it's no they, longer... It's not, it's no they longer, can post-produce their own stuff. No, I'm saying lead card. Well, no, but disc golf, yeah. disc they, golf pro tour and you has, can watch it afterwards yeah but, but they, they need to cut the disc it golf net, they, the they disc golf pro tour tried it with steve dodge back in the day and he did it the wrong way he cut it cold turkey said well, no no, no i'm bad. saying they need to cut they can cut so they have they have all the different cameras yeah filming yes right live they have all that footage still yeah so then after the fact that pay was someone, Dodge tried to pay get. someone to go in. And this was the issue, was then they took that lead card away from Jomez. Okay. So and then gave all, him a chase card? No, they, they cut... So this is where the issue was. They cut all media companies out of the Pro Tour period. See, I feel like that's what eventually needs to happen, but I feel like that needs to slowly... That's what I'm saying. That needs to slowly I happen. think Steve Dodge's idea 
was right, but I think it was way too soon. Yeah. And I think it was super poorly implemented. Yeah, the problem with they his... They sucked it. The I problem mean, with his is the coverage was bad. Yeah. The, the they, coverage has gotten... The live coverage wasn't good. A hundred times better. Yeah. The post-produced coverage wasn't good. Oh, well, yeah. If All the, pro- if the product's bad. bad, then that's... And the thing but is, But that like, was the thing is because he, he cut it cold turkey, so he didn't have time to slowly make sure we had Everything's this. in order. The yeah. thing is, too, that... He literally tested the live stream at Memorial. The Jomas so. crew is super talented and really good, but they're not... You're, like they're not there's not like there's nobody else out there that could do that like, well, like I mean, the pro tour could hire people you you have other production companies that are doing the same thing right just not at the level of Jomez but I'm just saying like if if like Jomez was never like people I mean if you gave Central Coast realistically if you gave Central Coast the amount of money that Jomez makes with their Patreon and all that stuff you don't think he would quit his job and hire people and their their production would look very similar. That's what I'm saying. Like there's always there's like so many still, talented graphics. He's still graphics doing people it. Out he's there. still doing a full I feel like he still has a full time job, right? Does, yeah. yeah. So if all of a sudden you're like, hey, we can start paying you a hundred thousand dollars, you so don't yeah. you don't think he could find people and all of a sudden the cover so is see, this very is where similar. so this is It'd where, be like, interesting. What y'all are saying in my head, I fully agree, <laughs> but my like deep gut Jomez disc golf fanboy hurts because what I know in my head, knowledge wise, is that ten like several years from now, something with Jomez is either gonna have to change, or the sport is gonna look a lot different. Even same goes with Central Coast and all this because as the coverage moves forward, it's going to move more towards live. Yeah. As the coverage moves forward, it's going to move more towards being under one umbrella. And what the Pro Tour offered back in 20, I think it was 2016, was to bring Jomez into that umbrella. But you're no longer Jomez. You are now Disc Golf Pro Tour. You are the ones, you're running the, you're operating the live cameras, mm-hmm. you're helping with the graphics, but it, it, you're not building your brand. Yeah. You are now the Pro Tour. Yeah. They turned it down. They also just now recently turned down USDGC for similar reasons, uh, to my knowledge, where you are not filming this for Jomez, you are filming this for the USDGC. They're not going to have those bargaining chips for long. That's what I'm saying is where I'm scared as a Jomez fanboy and a, like, I feel like I, the, my gut feeling resonates with our audience that is probably going to hate the words coming out of my mouth. But then my head knowledge kind of knows and can see what's about to happen is the fact that Jomez might have to step back and kind of look at where is our business model Five to ten years from now, because we don't hold the bar- we don't hold the power in our hands yeah. to so say Pro this Tour crap. has the power, and the big thing too is all the Pro Tour has to do if they're big enough that they have all the players committed and sold to it, then they can do whatever they want with the yeah. media, and the players aren't. Well, and also the players now benefit from the media because right, right now. So well, let me on yeah. your part. Though, let me let me catch on that. Like what Joe Mesh should do five years from now. One thing that is super lacking in disc golf right now is actual media. It might some people might be like, "What are you talking about?" Like, well, there's tons of media. No, there's tons of playing media. There's mm-hmm. tons of f- footage, right. but there's no stories. There's no no one co- no, no reporters. If you go to the disc golf pro tour and they want to be like, "Hey, we have a press conference. We want to ask questions." There's you know, a guy. It's Jeff Spring. Yeah. Asking you questions. There's That's no crazy. one else. Yeah. So my thought process is. Imagine a world where Central Coast, Parse, Jomez, GK Pro, all these other guys, they're no longer filming just guys playing disc golf at tournaments. They are now part of, like, they are now like a Barstool Sports. They are now a, uh, I'm trying to think of other ones like that, uh, Bleacher Report. There are these other, like, media entities that, like, yeah, Bleacher Report sometimes might str- like have the rights to stream. Uh, like I think did they do the match? Did they do the, they did the match? Yeah, so they have the rights to do some things like charity stuff like yeah. that. But Bleacher Report is going out and trying to find stories. They're going out. Maybe they go and they reach out to Ricky and Paul and said, "Hey, we have this really cool idea. We want you guys to battle and do this crazy epic thing." And to me, like I feel like that is super viable valuable yeah. because there's very few people and I would say this podcast this podcast upshot in the comments if you want to you know tell me more or tweet you can tweet me if I'm if I'm forgetting one I feel like there's not other that many podcasts out there other than this one and upshot that actually are really talking about stories talking about stuff that might need to happen might need to change I feel like a lot of the podcasts are just 
talking about what's going on and like and asking interviewing. very vanilla questions of like, well, how did you feel once you won? Right. Yeah. Versus really like finding stories and, and digging in deeper and, and really pushing the media side of it. So that's my thought is like, if Disc Golf Pro Tour was in charge of all the coverage eventually, it would force all these other companies not to just be like, well, we'll just film the best players playing. People are obviously going to watch that. Yeah. They would have to start getting creative. And yeah. Jomez has done that some with the, is it their profiles? Is that what they do? Or is that a Dixon Jack? Or ESPN? No, the, um, they did it before, it might have even been before Worlds. They did like these almost like mini documentaries on certain players. Uh, Pages was like over like her dad's whole thing. Yeah, they did something with they did something with Paige, and they are clearly sick at it. Yeah, um, yeah. but I, I like that idea. You um, gotta build. You gotta build the players. Because that's where build something yeah. something to, to get people to either want to root for someone or not want to root and, for someone. Okay, so as we're kind of talking about disc golf media, um, one thing that I've always kind of brought up. Well, first off, I don't even ask this question because I wrote it down. I think this question will lead to the question I'm about to bring up is. Should there be, slash, is there currently a skill minimum to have an opinion in disc golf? No. Not an opinion. Okay, so... Or for your opinion to be valid. Yeah. Well, yeah, this is something, yeah, this is something that's huge in disc golf is, like, people, you like, you or I will say something and people will be like, well, your opinion doesn't matter because you're, you, you can never beat those guys. Okay, well, <laughs> that's ridiculous because you look at every other professional sports and the analysts, yeah, some of the analysts are, like, Hall of Famers and like guys that play in the league and they have a part and a lot of times they're sucky analysts yes yeah, <laughs> it's true and those guys play a part because they can give perspective on certain things like what does it feel like to step up in the bottom of the ninth two outs what does it feel like to I don't know win a gold medal all these things but a lot of sports comes down to numbers and objective things and you know like you can be analytical about it without having done it before. You know, there's, I can um, I can judge somebody's performance, their putting performance. If they went, you know, three from ten from C one X, I can be like, he put it awful, and it's true. It's objectively true. And he might have beat me that yeah, day, but he could I wasn't be, playing out yeah, there. Yeah, like that's just how it works. Do you like, know? Do you know the guy that came up with strokes gained in golf? Do you remember his name? I wanted to oh give him gosh. like a little shout out, but I can't remember his name. But the guy know. basically. He's like a he's like a mathematician. He's he he, right. doesn't, he doesn't even golf. He just loves numbers mm-hmm. and golf statistics. Back in the day, when he was like looking at him, he was like, "This doesn't really actually show who's doing well." He's like, "You need to actually have something that shows like ha- how many strokes are you gaining on the field." Right. Mm-hmm. So, and that's kind of where disc golf could baseball is the same way wins above replacement and things like that there's so many stats like that yeah so mathematicians that made them yeah so disc golf could have that as well where like fairway percentages that doesn't really matter if you're throwing 300 feet off the fairway you're not really gaining that much versus like someone that is just juicing 500 foot drives and, and, and like getting to par fives and two and stuff like that person is going to be getting a lot more strokes off the tee than the person throwing 300 foot shots straight down the middle. So this mathematician, kind of completely removed from golf, came up with all these stats and like he constantly is coming up with all these sorts of like interesting things of like, did you know Tiger Woods, blah, 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 all this really interesting stuff. And he like, he has no sort of like background in golf. Yeah. And I'm guessing if he went and swung a golf club, he'd probably be very miserable at it. Well, yeah, that's what I was going to say is like, if you look at, I, I want to say Tom Thibodeau, the Bulls coach. coach. Yeah. I want to say that he has never played basketball above a high school level. I there's, could be off there. There's Ooh. a lot of guys. But like there's that. a lot Joe of Madden, NBA the coaches. Race coach, that guy never played professionally. I don't there's a lot of coaches that, if you look at skills relation, they're like 890 rated disc golfers. Right. But they're able to coach Paul. Why? Because. They don't need to play to be able to be great at breaking down disc golf form right. or breaking down how to improve it. That's why they, golfers have swing coaches. Yes. Yeah, they might never be able to execute that themselves, but they're able to look at it objectively and do it. Secondary point that I think disc golf could learn from other sports worlds, um, at least from what I've seen, is like, name a random pro in uh, disc golf. In disc golf? Yeah. Calvin. Calvin Heinberg. So if I look at Calvin Heinberg and I say, Calvin Heinberg's driving is trash. Definitely isn't. If I say Calvin Heinberg's driving sucked and he played horrible this weekend, people in the comments immediate defense are like, oh my gosh, but like Calvin's such a good guy. Like you can't, why are you coming <laughs> yeah. after Calvin like that? I know. 
when did I say Calvin wasn't was me? We've met Calvin. He's yeah, nice. Calvin's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't change that in this fake scenario I just made up. His driving sucked. Yeah. yeah. And when Stephen A. Smith talks about LeBron James being trash or not a clutch player or Kawhi, he went hard on Kawhi. Yeah. Right. No one's saying, "Oh my gosh, Stephen A. Smith, be careful." Yeah. Like, Kawhi yeah. just donated a million dollars to all the Are you kidding me? Like it's you're gonna not. A, you got to separate There's character separation. from roles. Like yeah, and disc golf that separation. I think it all personally. I think it stems back to. How accessible pros are. Yeah. To where I feel like I'm good friends with different it's because pros. Because they're still small enough. That, yeah. That they feel. Yeah. But like I, that's what that comes back to. The guy next door. That could, yeah. I exactly. like what I like though is I do like people arguing. Yes. Like not arguing. I don't. That Debate. came off. That came off bad. Uh, but yeah, I do like having like fan bases like going yeah. after one another. Yeah. And being like, you know. But on. We're stats. not getting into LeBron. Yeah, we're not getting in LeBron MJ we don't have at to. all. Yeah. <laughs> but like those guys are going back and forth and the thing that you'll never maybe you might hear it in some forums and stuff, but very rarely will you ever see someone being like, Well, MJ was like a way nicer person than LeBron. Yeah. And for like someone trying to say like right. MJ was a, they don't a better use player. character because no, they say like MJ's got more rings. Uh, and then someone will be like, well, LeBron has more assists per game. And then someone's like, well, MJ, blah, blah, blah. And then Le- they'll be like, LeBron took a team that was absolute trash to the finals. What did MJ do? You know, they go back and forth. They never talk about stuff off the court. And I think that's something that could be beneficial in the disc golf uh, topics. Yeah. Well, I think just, that's keep, the... just keep it on the, keep everything on the course. What's going yeah. on the course? Because I think that's the big thing of, again, going back to, if we want to be looked at as professional, we have as like a professional sport and be treated as professionals. We have to first treat professionals as professionals and treat ourselves as professionals and treat you know what I mean. We mm-hmm. have to first take on that identity for other people to see us as that identity. Mm-hmm. You know, because I mean, it, it just it doesn't make sense to me. And one person, or not one person, but one media company that I have been very impressed with this year has been Ulti World because in the past they yeah. have been. I mean, not to come after them or anything, but they have been throwing kind of softball questions. This year, that has changed drastically. I don't know what changed about it, but I love, I love it when they're talking about the when they're talking to PDJ about USDGC and Innova owning the major. Yeah, they're not sitting back there and just like, okay, well, that's kind of a touchy sub- subject. Let's not let's not talk about it. No, they're talking you to the PDJ gonna... board president, and, and they're like, how are you not owning your own major? And, and like. You asking pressing questions. You know what's going to help that too is Bird was talking about more like media saturation, like people asking questions and being involved in that. The more it gets saturated where it's competitive, the more hard questions and good questions yeah, they want Because you have to dig for that or if you don't have the best story, you're yeah, not going to get read. Yeah, you want the sound bites. Right. You want the sound bites. Yeah. You, want the, you right. want the thing that was said. And, and I think also right now there's not enough people that like care about certain things. So a lot of things can like slide under the radar. If you know what I mean. I think I know what you mean. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's like once once there's enough people, and it's slowly getting there. It's slowly getting there. Once there's enough people and then people start bringing stuff up like, huh, wh- why is that happening? Maybe a couple years ago, someone goes, huh, why is that not happening? Like everyone else is like, I don't know. And then like it moves on. But when there's more and more people, there might be another person be like, yeah, that is weird. And then, what? Well, yeah, what? And then all of a sudden, now you got people being like, hey, why is this happening? And now someone has to answer to it. Right now, there's a lot of things going on where no one really has to answer to it. Mm-hmm. And I think when that starts changing, I think you'll start seeing a lot of things move in the right direction. Yeah, for sure. I think, I feel like disc golf in general is headed in the right direction. Mm-hmm. And I think that a lot of the changes that I have seen, especially this year, I think it was a, a massive year for disc golf. Was. Especially looking back on it. It was massive. Can we just preface something real quick too? When something changes in the NBA, that has no impact on me playing pickup basketball. Yeah. When something changes in the PGA Tour, that has absolutely no impact on me going out and playing golf. Mm-hmm. We, need it, we need to all continue like to, to realize that like a lot of stuff we're talking about is changing things on the Pro Tour. And only the Pro Tour. Only the pro tour. Yeah. Yeah. So whatever that happens, things change or whatever, it has nothing. It's going to change nothing with you going out and playing disc golf. Yeah. 
Everything's, think, everything's gonna stay the same. I think that's the same. Like the professional, like treating them as professionals, is also that separation in your mind. Of these guys on the pro tour are the pros. Like there's local pros and stuff, sure, and there's you know Silver Series. I think that'll eventually be our web.com tour type Which of would thing. Be fire. Um, and there will be different levels of pros. But the top guys, the PGA Tour card holding pros, are the people playing on the Pro Tour week in and week out. And that's where a lot of these changes and stuff both benefit, sometimes hurt, but change. You know what I mean? And that's another thing, too, is just because we talk about something needing to change, I feel like people immediately think that we are saying that, A, we know everything, and B, that we're saying X, Y, and Z is wrong with disc golf. Nah. It's like, well, no, we've gotten here. Disc golf's great. Yeah. X, Y, and Z can change to make disc golf even better. Yeah. It, it might make it worse. Yeah, it could suck. But, but we have no idea unless we try. Right. And change, change can be reversed. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it, can be, it can change real quick. But here, here's, a, here's an interesting thing. What, uh, are we good on time? Yeah, we're right at an hour right now. Okay. I saw, I don't know who tweeted. Someone tweeted saying the PDGA and I think it might be with Diff. Oh, both, yeah. Both claim to be the international inter, like the some they both claim to be doing the same thing they both claim to be regulating international disc sports or something I'm like that yeah i've never even heard of that with diff you've never heard of with diff yeah. the yeah. world with diff is it, international with diff is more of an ultimate frisbee okay. i think like they're bigger in ultimate frisbee it's the world federation di- uh, is, that was no, ultra ultra world broke this article is that what it was mm-hmm. world something disc federation um so, like, Whip Diff holds, like, all the records. So, if you ever want to break some sort of record, like, I think it's through Whip Diff. Uh, you've played, like, uh, you've played that game guts. where you, like, Guts. That's Whip Diff. You can be a Guts World Champion through Whip Diff. So, it's interesting, too, because I think right now there is this weird overlap between a lot of these organizations. Yeah. And there needs to, to me, I think there needs to be more of a separation between the two. Yeah. Like, I think the PDGA shouldn't really have too much of a hand in the disc golf pro tour. No, I think they should be completely separate organizations. They should just be like, they should just be running the rules, making sure manufacturers aren't making illegal discs. And here's an interesting thing for you Should pro tour events be sanctioned by the PDGA? No. Outside of ratings, what does it do? It's the, it has to do with the rules. You right? play by the, you'll play by the PDGA rules. PDGA rules are in effect. Right. But uh, but yeah, being an unsanctioned the day, event versus can, a sanctioned the TD, event, what does it change? The TDs are the ones that technically make the rules. Yeah, they enforce. The I rules. mean, they do the they handle the registering, but I mean, obviously that can be done otherwise. That's through so it's that's through disc golf scene and just filters into the PDGA. Well, I mean, that just comes down to the whole ratings thing, then, doesn't it? It's literally just ratings. <laughs> And are we outside of that's definitely not that's a topic we're yeah. so, No, we're not going to get into ratings, but I'm saying outside... So, like, if Coming you look at the from. ways that the PDGA could be potentially... A lot of this is outside speculation information. But looking at, like, scheduling, um, you know, different things with... Um, shoot, what was it? There's different regulations and stuff. The biggest thing is scheduling with the national tour and what events are on what. When you look at, you know, the kind of the cons of being directly tied to the PDGA, what are the pros for the Pro Tour? So, like, what, what does the PDGA give them outside of player ratings? For, yeah, for the Pro Tour? I for the Pro Tour. I don't know at all. Yeah, that would is, be... Are you as a player going to the Pro Tour next year, if it was unsanctioned, still had the same amount of money, still had the same media coverage, all that, are you still playing? If it's not a sanctioned yeah, PDGA event? I'd be event? more happy about it. That's what I'm saying, is... Who's then, not because then at, at that point, then rankings are the only thing that matter. Who's that's what I'm saying is who, who that's a serious disc golfer trying to make a living. I feel is like not showing up. I feel like we're program. missing something. I feel like there has to be a reason why. There has to be some sort of benefit. And I feel like we're not thinking. I mean, part of it would be like the the PDGA's um, disciplinary actions would be in effect if they're rank if they're sanctioned. PDGA disciplinary actions wouldn't. So if like. Well, those are all things that the pro yeah, tour. Pro, can do. Every, That's what everything. I'm saying. Yeah, everything. What's something? Does yeah, what's tour. something that the PDGA is doing that the pro tour couldn't do? Nothing. That Nothing. would be the question. Nothing. Even rules. Because you just if use the, P- the PDGA's the pro tour rule book. To, they could use their own rules too. But I'm saying you just use the PDGA's rule book. Yeah. Because in golf, um, what's the tour? Yeah, a PGA tour. And then what is the PDGA in golf? U- USGA. USGA. Are the PGA tour events sanctioned by the USGA? 
It's a good question. What does that even mean, though? Like, <laughs> yeah. Because, well, I mean, there's, like, right now, I, there's A tier, B tier, C tier, National Tour, Pro Tour, Major. So, I know the USGA, USGA, the only tournament they, I know that they only have, like, their, their hand in is the US Open. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, the USGA, like, are the ones that are setting the course And the PGA up. Tour is fully separate from it. Of what? The USGA. Like, the PGA Tour is a separate entity. No, I think the USGA still is, like, uh, very in on manufacturing. So, like, the USG, okay. USGA, like, the manufacturers have to follow the USGA rules. That's a big thing for the PGA. On clubs and stuff. And then based... And I think the USGA also are... They use the official rules. But when you say sh- sanctioned, I don't know exactly, like, terminology. Right. What what all that implies being I'm sanctioned, but yeah, I'm looking they definitely right use the rules that the they USGA. They use the doping policy and drug testing policy of the USGA on the PGA. But the USGA uses the world doping anti doping thing as their they use as their guidelines to make theirs. It's yeah. not like a copy paste. Um, so that's something that they do. Well, that's a whole other thing. When but that's, that's what I'm saying is like all of this stuff could just simply be the pro tour. If you like the pro tour rules that are in effect for what's legal in a disc and what's not is from the PDGA. Doesn't have to be sanctioned to use their rules. The yeah, the word sanctioned. Yeah, what does it really that's, mean? That's a word. It's that, just tied to ratings. That's what I'm saying. And so then, yeah. if you break that relationship, what does that free the pro tour up to do? A lot. Yeah. I think I think I think it opens the window on them. I mean, really, it's just it's just a time thing, right? So like right now, if the pro tour wants to do something, they have to run it by the PDGA. And they have to PDGA wait approval. They, they have to, to wait for that approved. and have that come back. Yeah. Versus them just being like, "We're just doing it. Yeah, we're, we're running it." That's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah, no, I mean, I think it's a great point. I think that's it's a, I think it's that's a great bold point. There. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I've never thought of it before. Right yeah, now. that's interesting. You know, it's just one of those things where you know we got to think about like where a lot of the money flow is going and you know people one of my favorite things to say to people in this regard because a lot of people will be like oh you just want to make more money you just want the pros to you know you're you're trying to be a pro so you just want to make more money and i love trolling them because i'm like you're the same person that says i suck and i will never cash in a pro tour event so it's like what <laughs> you <laughs> I can't, suck and never cash. yeah you like, can't what? say both things but I think we do have to, you know, the money is getting bigger. Yeah. Right? Let's 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 have a fun analogy. Here we go. Ready for this? I was born ready. Here we go. I fun analogy. Alright, so let's say your mom, you're a kid, and you have siblings, right? You had you had a brother. You know, let's say your mom comes home and is like, Hey, here's a, here's some Skittles and she got your brother a bag of Skittles. You're probably a little annoyed that you didn't get anything, right? You're just gonna be like, Well that what the heck is that? Yeah, okay. big musket. Okay, your brother turns 16, your mom gets him a car. You're like, all right, I get it. I'm not 16 yet. He gets a car, whatever, whatever. But in the back of your head, you're thinking, I'm ready when I turn when I 16. 16. I'm getting mm-hmm. that car. You turn 16, you don't get a car. Mm. That hurts. Uh, is your reaction the same as the bag of Skittles? Probably not. No. no so no. this notion of like right now the money isn't really like a big net number in disc golf. So I think a lot of things is just getting like brushed under the rug and no one's really talking about it. Mm-hmm. But once the money starts moving and it's getting there, if you know, it doesn't take that much to do some figures and seeing how much some of these companies are pulling in, how much the PDGA, how much some of these media companies, all this are pulling in. Yeah. Once you start cranking those numbers. To me, it's like, you know, everyone Everyone was like having sob stories about Ezra living in a car. It's like, if you really care about a pro living in a car like that, then you should be digging into where the money's going. Yeah. Because to me, it's like you said, like the pro, the pros on the tour are the ones that are driving everything in the, in the grand scheme of things, right? Mm-hmm. And, you know, if, if all of a sudden some random company came up and said, you know what? we want to start our own pro, pro tour and we're going to do this, this, and this. And they were somehow able to get the top 20 men and the top 10 women to go and play on that. What pro tour would probably be more popular? Probably the one with the better players. Yeah. So the, it's something to think about as like, where do you want the money flow to go? And, you know, if we want better players, if we want guys to take it more seriously on tour, then the money needs to start going that way and not out into other areas. Black hole. Where does, it, where does the money go? Yeah. I've never followed that. 
But it's something that I think once the it's money... Like see some paper trails. You know, yeah. once it starts, once the number starts getting bigger and bigger, there's going to be people digging into it and being like, wait a second. Why did this guy just win a tournament and make $3,000, but all of a sudden... this the com- media company... This company, company over here just got... It. Yeah, this company over here just got 40 k And the more people that are investing in the sport, too, they're going to be very concerned with that as well. Yeah. Yes. It's, like, where's their money going? Yeah, where's my money going? Yes. So there's there's a lot of things that I think are going to be really interesting to, for especially you guys to talk about in the next couple of years because disc golf is a very s- small sport currently. It has potential to be bigger. I still don't agree that it would ever be bigger than golf. We can. I just don't like the word ever. We can. If you put a timetable on it, I'll probably agree with you. Yeah. Like in our, I don't think I will die with disc golf being bigger than ball. Maybe like two hundred years. Sure. Okay. But that's not ever. That's a, that's a timeline. Okay. I mean, has there was there a sport that was like really popular that's fallen off Track in, the, and field. in the last hundred years? Well, I mean, maybe not hundred years. But go back to like ancient times, like the original Olympics okay, and like Greek and stuff. Sport. Track and yeah, field but, was it. But no, track no. and field is like the it's most popular like, thing in the Olympics. Sport sport but now it's just the Olympics, which is not the most popular sport. Anymore. Um. But wait, what? Not the most popular sporting event, the Olympics. <laughs> wait a second. Wait, wait, wait a in second. Other, wait in a other second. countries, I feel like some sports have fallen off. Like rugby. Don't get me wrong. In certain countries, like New Zealand, Australia, like diehard followings. But like in other companies, like um, or other countries that are like England, I feel like it still has its following. But I don't think it's as popular as it used to be. Yeah. But that being said, they've always had their one sport, being soccer. soccer yeah. So well, football, right? They invented the word soccer. So. Oh, did they? Yeah. Oh. English did. Well, then they can't. Right. They can't get mad at us saying f- soccer. Correct. It's it, it's interesting. I think I think it's a interesting thing to see what potential disc golf has for sure, but it definitely needs to be in one of those things of where you know you gotta have like going back to it. You gotta have some sort of separation, man, between uh, the players and the fans. You gotta have yeah. it. It's, I think it's a bunch of little things that make big differences. I think so too. Yeah, like tiny changes can have big impacts in the long term. And and at the end of the day, it's fun talking about this stuff. Like absolutely. I think the more people talk about it and stuff, like I, my thing is like I love what I love too is I just don't get why people get so mad so when quick. we. Well, that's just people. people. <laughs> but do. my thing is, like, it, so it escalates fast. Some people get so mad. So We're just trying quick. to stir up conversation. What I love, <laughs> yeah, is, that's all it is. what I love is reading through the comments and the people who didn't get mad but have great counterpoints. Yeah, because that gets conversation going. And when two right. people are having just like an actual debate conversation where both are just kind of talking about the same topic and how can we change it or why should it stay the same, great things come from that because then ideas start flowing and it might be a compromise between like. Oh, it's not A or B, but look at C now. Holy cow! How did yeah. neither of us think of this? And that never happens if the conversation never starts. Yeah, I just, man, I just, right. I just know. I, I tried, I tried it on Twitter. I tried to have conversations and and hear people out. But you know, if you're coming into a conversation being like, I'm a hundred percent right. Nothing this person can say will ever change my mind. And oh, by the way, this person's a terrible person because they think this. It's so hard to have those conversations. Yeah. And so I've I've just removed myself. Unfortunately, I will not be able to have conversations. Like, if you have an issue and you start with like, hey, you're a terrible person, you suck, I'm probably not going to respond. Yeah. Where before I was like, what happened? Like, why do you feel like there's got to be something I did to make you feel that way? So, it's the same thing with what we're talking about here with just topics. It's like, I don't think anyone should take it personally. You know, if Joe Mez is listening, I don't think they should be like, well, what the heck, these guys want me to be out of the sport? That's lame. No, we're but saying the opposite. We're saying like... Like, do other stuff. Yeah. That's going to help grow like help and, grow the sport. And I get the whole, like, grow the sport. Grow. It's like, you need to have people talking about it. There's one thing to just put gameplay out there. It's another thing when you have people talking about it. Like, well, that's the thing too is change grows the sport. Yeah. Like. Or you end up like blockbuster. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. Literally, I mean, didn't Netflix start a VCR? VCRs. Redbox killed blockbuster. Well, yeah. but I know. I'm saying, I'm saying Netflix. Netflix, that. <laughs> Netflix started with you ordered it online and shipped to you. Yeah, and they were like, this, this is a bag. terrible idea. And the next thing you know, it's all digital <laughs> because change grew the company. Yeah. Change grows the sport. But VCR was like, VCR companies were in the same thing, right? They're like, yeah. hey, 
people aren't like really fond of these big bricks that you like are sticking in. I think you know, you know there's these little CDs that, and they're like, nah, bro, people are gonna love the bricks always. Yeah, they're gone. See ya. Yeah, I mean, sports that don't change don't grow. And that's just, I mean, anything in life that doesn't change doesn't die. grow. Yeah, and and to be fair, some of the changes suck. Yeah, like the NFL, like protecting quarterbacks, like like freaking pillowcases. That to me, I think sucks. And that's but, like, that's the type of thing that can be revoked. But if I, but if I sit back and I like my fan of me is like, no, you, I want to see people just get lit up. But if I sit back and think about it, it's like they're protecting the most important people for their brand. Right. You know, if, so if all of a sudden like, like five quarterbacks, Patrick Mahomes can't be getting injured. Yeah, <laughs> five quarterbacks all of a sudden just get injured in a season because they're just letting people tee off on them. Those five teams are all way less exciting to watch. Right. Unless they're Carver Simmons. Yeah. But I think, especially in a sport like disc golf, where we're so new to a lot of the changes, there's going to be changes. How long has disc golf been around? It's not even been around that long, right? 80s. Nah, it's got to be the 80s. Is that it? 40 years? Yeah. I think so. Didn't really get to prominence till the 90s. I think the PDGA started in like, I mean, the USDGC, our most established major, was like 85. Like, we don't want to be like Pokemon. Not that old. We don't want to be Pokemon cards, right? I think the right? first USDGC was. Was it even? 90. It was like ninety something. Was it ninety five? You know what I'm talking about. What'd you say, Pokemon Go? No, I said we don't want to be like Pokemon cards. What? Dude, Pokemon cards for like a period of time were legit, like Pokemon tournaments. It was 1999. 99. Yeah, I thought so. yeah. Wait, 99 was what? When USDGC was established. First year I was born. Yeah, that's why someone said like blah blah 1989 USDGC champion. So I said 84. They made a joke. Nice. He said it started in 85. Who did? You made a joke about no, that? Thought, You're wrong. I thought Bear did. Was it Bear? Maybe I missed it. Yeah, he said 84. Yeah. But no, 99. That's okay. what I'm saying. That's like, I would say our most so prestigious young. major. So young. Yeah. Yeah. But that's the thing is some of the changes are going to be the wrong move. Yeah, and they're going correct. to get changed back. For sure. But that being said, looking at other sports that have been around for so much longer and things that they're doing, there's a good chance that they're doing them right. Like, if you look at other companies, yeah. what are other companies doing? They're, they, they're bidding, not bidding, but they're, like, enticing people from other, like, their rivals to come to their job and give away all the trade secrets. You know, they're not hiring someone, like, PepsiCo is not hiring someone from Coke and having that person come over and the Coke person would be like, Hey guys, we were doing this at Coke and it was working. They'd be like, shut up. This is what we do over here at Pepsi. It's like, yeah. no, they're literally hiring that person because clearly that person knows something and they're doing something well over there. And PepsiCo wants an idea of like, what are they doing that's working that we're not doing? How can we get a competitive How can we edge? change and grow? Yeah. How we can change and grow? Yeah. And one of those things, quickly, because I know we're running out of time, is the prestige, right? 99 was the first USDGC. There needs to be more, I, to me, there needs to be like a more consistency f- from like one tournament to the next year. Like the more you can consistently have it to where people can look back and be like, because like the three point change, right? In the NBA, it is impossible to compare someone after the three point era and to compare someone prior to the three point era because they were two different games. So the more that disc golf can figure stuff out quickly and change it and get to where people can like start debating and start talking about statistics and stuff like that, I think the better. Yeah. And yeah. a lot of that has to do with like the tournaments kind of I having think, some sort of like history to it. And I think one part of it that this might just be the designer in me, but we were noticing it in a bunch of different things is especially for majors, I think majors are key. The majors should have a specific look. Like USDGC, I feel like has done a pretty good job, but like, are you talking about like course on the course? No, 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 no. like, like branding. branding, like the masters, mm. the masters logo might change here and there, but it's it always going to be, it it I'm saying if it was a really small, slight change, like let's, you know, instead of the US and the United States in it being flat, let's make it a little 3d, Okay. but it's the same logo. Sure. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Good point. We're not going to have the like PGA worlds has a new logo every year. Ledgestone, which isn't a major has a new logo every year. At least they, they need to at least stick to the same brand colors or at least the same brand icons within it. Just so that from a fan experience, when you see the graphics package, you see the stuff coming so out, I think, there's this more like, oh yeah, you remember it, you remember it, you remember so, it. So I think it's interesting because like the waste management, right? Mm-hmm. It's the Phoenix Open. And the Phoenix Open, they the PGA Tour and the Phoenix Open decided to 
have waste management be the sponsor. I think they did like another five years or something. Mm -hmm. I can't remember. But the interesting thing is like if Ledgestone decided it like, oh, I forgot his name. Nihano. Nihano. If he decided like, hey, I don't want to do this anymore, would Ledgestone happen the no. following year? That, a, a turn, I, that, honestly, that's, without, that's a problem. Without like, Nate Heinl, that tournament I don't think happens at all. And people so, are never. So that's the problem is like. But that's not a major. Should, no, but here. Uh, Waste Manager Open's not a major. Oh, no. I was, I, one, is, my point was about majors. Yeah, that's but I, what I'm just saying is like yeah. there needs to be a separation between the course, ter- and course slash tournament and the sponsor coming in. Yeah. So, like, if Les Show, I don't know how we do this. This is something that you guys can figure out if you want. But if Les Show, if Nate Heil is like, it's not worth it anymore. I don't want to, you know, spend this money on it. And he leaves. Someone else can come in and be the title sponsor for it. So, I don't know what you would call a tournament. But you see what I'm saying? Like, right now, I think think everything is so, everything is so, uh, like, sponsor driven about what to sponsor and that's great that's what you want mm-hmm. but you need to have something to where if the sponsor's out someone else is wanting to take well, think, over that turn i think there's two things to that a ledstone's a very unique case because if you even so look that's at not a good example yes and no but i think i think there's there should be a pro tour event at those two courses yeah so i think that's where the that's where the side part of the issue is i think the true issue is that the Pro Tour is seeking out events that are already ran by a TD. So, like, if you remove, like, the Battle for Bedford, right? We set up that event. We run that event. Yeah. If we were a Pro Tour and stuff, we have all the connections to the Parks and Rec. The Pro Tour doesn't. So, if you remove yeah. us, you need now to find a new... I'm not saying event. remove you guys. I'm no, no, saying... No, 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 no. I am. I'm oh, saying. you're saying remove them. Because if Nate Heinold tomorrow decides, you know what? I'm never running this golf event again. It can be very hard for someone to now take Nate Heinold's position and run the Ledgestone. Mm. Because it's Nate Heinold that I've has always, all the connections. I've always wondered how the PJ Tour does that. You see what I'm saying? Do they... I don't think they have staff that runs tournaments. Like, I don't think they have... Oh, uh, like um, if they're just using in-house people? Or? Like, I think, I think it's almost the same model that Disc Golf has. I don't think they have, like... A tournament director person but the that course, goes around the and course does. runs the tournament, I would imagine, for the PGA Tour. Yes. Because it's not at a public park that's that you what, have to that's go what get. I think. So yeah. that's where disc golf is always going to be different, unless we start having private courses. That's why I think in disc golf, if I'm but the they, pro but tour. But the courses also remove, though. So, like, with Beth Page, like, the course. I'm saying that a tournament it's such, is not is, fully reliant. In the PGA Tour, I would be mind boggled. If a tournament was fully reliant on one singular person and their connections and not a brand's connections. You see what I'm saying? Who's like, a little bit easier too. Who sets because, up the tournament? It's a little bit easier too because disc golf courses are typically not just disc golf courses. A lot of times they're parks and other properties. But I'm saying if it was the Pro Tour and like, hey, I'm Nate Heinle reaching out to you on behalf of the Pro Tour. So now if it's Nate Heinle gone, the Parks and Rec are used to Okay, hey, sorry, you know, Nate Heinle's no longer here. I am Hunter Thomas reaching out to you on behalf of the Pro Tour. Well, I think the Park and Rec are like. I think the PJ Tour. I think the PJ Tour for sure is heading sponsorships. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For tournaments. Mm-hmm. That's uh, what I'm saying. For sure. But There's too much reliant on the TD right now, and not enough on the tour. To where if TDs crumble somehow, like if a TD is removed, yeah, it's gonna be hard for the same. The Pro event Tour might be just thinking, oh, we're just gonna give up on that one and find. We're gonna it. move into a different event, right. which removes the whole prestige. prestige. I feel, I feel like we need to, we need to have, I need to reach out to some of my PGA Tour people. Well, I think, it's I also, think it'd be fascinating to hear the behind the scenes of how they run certain things. Yeah, because I think they definitely have people there making sure things are run properly and done properly. But I don't think... I feel like they would be in charge of like fan experience. Yeah, they have like certain things. like that we're got, This is where we're going to set up the the, uh, sh- the pro shop. This is where we're going to do this and this yeah. and this. Um, but I think there definitely are people on the ground that are working on the next year. Like as soon as the tournament's over, they're starting to work on next oh, year. Sure. That aren't... Aren't connected to the PGA Tour. No, yeah, it's probably sense. course people. But I'm saying I think it's that, also the sponsorship potentially too. Yeah. Uh, but I'm saying I don't think that. Right. I don't right. think that it's all riding on the back of literally one guy. No. Yeah, you don't want you don't want that. That's what I'm saying. Like yeah. that, like Nate Heinle right now, he represents Ledgestone and he puts on this event, and he's connected to the Parks and Rec, and he's also connected to the Pro Tour. 
what it should be is like the Pro Tour got Ledstone as a sponsor. They're using they're have they're almost hiring Nate Heidel to run their event for them type of a thing. He's always in Illinois. He's running that event. He is the, the Pro Tour's TD instead of like if the Battle for Bedford became like let's say that the, we just called it the Foundation Battle for Bedford. If the Pro Tour ever came in and was like, hey, that's going to be a Pro Tour event, the name doesn't change. It's now the Foundation Battle for Bedford. No, it would. It would because the Pro Tour would start... Uh, it doesn't right now is what I'm saying. Oh. That's why it's the Ledstone Insurance Open. Yeah. The Instead name, of being the people, Northwood Open people would, presented by Ledstone. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You see what I'm I saying? see what you're saying. But I think the PGA Tour doesn't go to a course and say, hey, we want to run an event here. What, what, you know, who, who's doing this? Like, but they also are going they, to a course and being like, Oh, what events are you running right now? Correct. As a local event that we could take on and be this. Event? Correct. They That's basically, what Discoff's doing. yeah, they basically have their events, but this is something that I feel like would be interesting to dig in a little bit more. Cause I don't think I have all the knowledge in it, but I definitely know like the Genesis Invitational, for example, that is played out in California at one of the sickest courses ever, which I think is Ridge, uh, Oh gosh, was it Ridge Ridgeview? Ridge, something. I'll look it up. But an absolute beautiful course. If it's right now called the Genesis Invitational, if Genesis dropped it and said we don't want to do this anymore, they would find another sponsor and it'd be called something else. And you would know it as that, but you would know it's at that course. Hmm. The Pro Tour wouldn't, PJ Tour wouldn't be like, all right, this is gone. We're not we're not coming back to this course anymore. Right. So it's like the PGA Tour, I, in my mind, I don't know how it works. I would love to talk to someone about this, but I think they have like handpicked certain courses that work really well. And then they go out and say, hey, we're going to run an event at this course. Do you want to sponsor it? Hey, do you want to sponsor it? Hey, do you want to sponsor it? And then they work with that sponsor on the name of the tournament. I got gotcha. you. Because, like, realistically, the waste, like, we, the tournament that, the most popular tournament, I would say, for a casual fan, like, the Waste Management Open, right? Uh, if they really wanted to, they could call that the WN. They could call that the, the big, the big kahuna. Yeah. You know, they, they would be able to be in charge of what they wanted, but they wanted their name on there. But it's, but sense. in the PGA, it's, like, the course has the emphasis more than the name. Correct. Whereas, like, I was literally earlier in this podcast saying Ledgestone, and you're like, what course? Correct. Because we refer to Ledgestone instead of Northwood Gold. Yeah. Or Lake Eureka. Yeah. So you would say, like, yeah. And that that was a conversation that we kind of had about there's a lot, people know so many, di- know so many golf courses based off of, like, the actual course and not so much the tournament. You could probably go up to a lot of people and say, hey, like, what tournament is played at this course? And they might not actually know the tournament name, but they know the golf course. Yeah. Which, in disc golf, I think it would be backwards. Yeah. Like, they might know the tournament name, but they don't actually know the course. Yeah. All right. And the problem with that is if anything ever happens to whoever's sponsoring it or something, like you said, a TD, whatever... Now that name is completely gone and we have no connection to the course. Yeah. So like MVP, what does that stand for? Does anyone That's know? the disc. That's the manufacturer. MVP Open. Sponsored by oh, MVP. what? Yeah. Ew. <laughs> I didn't even know that. I thought it stood for something. No, it used it's to ma- be the Vibram Open. Because Maple Hill. It was the Vibram Open. Back when they made discs. Back when Vibram was the main sponsor, which was, oh. but Maple Hill is a might, great example because I might be I might be crazy in this, and people might be thinking I'm crazy, but no, I, think, I think Maple I think, Hill is a great example because Maple Hill was able to switch from the Vibram Open to the MVP Open because it was the course that was iconic, yeah, and not the tournament. There's not a lot of courses that well, there's like none that have the kind of other than Winthrop. There's like Winthrop no, Gold is another great one. Those are like the two big boys as far as like courses that are iconic. Yeah. Yeah, I think there just needs to be, and this is this is also something that can be done with meet the media companies. Can be done a little bit maybe better with the Disc Golf Pro Tour of like really just name dropping, like just keep right. saying like I think they did it at the tour like the tour uh, championship. Like Hornets I heard Nest. I heard Hornets Nest yeah, a lot. Good point. They brought it up a lot in coverage, and I it would be interesting to go back and listen to 
coverage at Northwoods and listen to coverage at Lake Eureka and see how many times they say Ledgestone versus Lake Eureka and Northwoods. Right. They'll be like, man, that's just like how, what it's like here at Ledgestone, not like here at Lake Eureka. They'll say Lake Eureka some. I think, I think tournaments that have two courses is where it gets a little tricky. Yeah. Because like when I refer to the tournament 90% of the time, I, refer, I just say Ledgestone. It's that, like, that is, yeah, when there's two courses, that is tricky, tricky for sure. Because then, you know, when I say Ledgestone, Northwood might come to mind for you, but Lake Eureka comes to mind for me. Mm-hmm. When I say the word Ledgestone. So, like, Jonesboro. I don't even know what that course is. No idea. What's Where's Jonesboro, it? though? I just That's the location. Is. Jonesboro Open. It's in Arkansas. Jonesboro, Arkansas. Yeah. But I have no idea the course. Is it Disc Side of Heaven? No. Yeah. Yeah, Disc, disc Side of Heaven. Side of heaven. Kind of proved my point there a little bit. Yeah, you did. It took me a while to get that yeah. one. And, I'm, <laughs> and I should know this stuff. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, I think pushing the actual, you know, because like they talk, like the Masters, for example, they talk about Augusta. They talk about Augusta lot. like it's a person. Yeah. Like it's alive and breathing. You know, it so is. it's like. The flowers. Those two, the water those two things need to go, those two things need to go hand in hand. Yeah. I think. I, I could see it for sure. Because then also it makes it a lot easier for like the fans to connect to it. Because they could be yeah. like, oh, I want to go and play Hornet's Nest. That's where they have the tour championship. Yeah. Versus like, I want to go play Jonesboro. And it's like, okay, well, where is that? And you're like, we got to look it up. I don't even know where they play it, but it looks cool. Yeah. I don't know. That's for kind sure. of a weird I think, tangent yeah. of tangents. I mean, I think this podcast, if nothing else, gave us a lot of future podcast topics that we can research deeper yeah. and the um, PGA tour thing is fast. Yeah, I think any, I can I think would you um, guys would you guys talk bring someone on if I could, if I if I could get someone from the Absolutely. from the tour? Yeah. <laughs> that could give a little bit more background to that cuz yeah. I think it'd be very interesting to kind of hear cuz I was just at where they have like the 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 championship where there's like uh, in in, uh, in Hawaii, no, in Hawaii. That sick course in Hawaii that they Where play. Where they have the tour, or the... They have the... You know what I'm talking about. The Tournament of Champions. The Tournament of Champions, yeah. yeah. I was just there, and... Kahlua, is that what it's called? Kahlua, yeah. yeah of course. Kapalua. Kapalua. Of course, crazy. Yeah, I, you can... Like, on Hawaii 18, you can hit, like, a 400 yard drive. It's disgusting. But... I watched that tournament, like, twice, and I knew the name of that course almost. <laughs> yeah. So that's something. Yeah. And it's not... It's but like I Hawaii. feel like... I feel like the... The sponsor was like running the show. Because mm. I was like, I was in a lot of the meetings. And I feel like the sponsor had a lot of. A lot of say. A lot of say in what was going on and like how they wanted the tournament to run and all that. Because at the end of the day, they are paying the big it bills. Reflects on them, yeah. They pay the big bills, but the PGA Tour has like guidelines. They have like, like standards. This, this is what we have to, have to do. Happen. We have to have this. We have to do this. Yeah, 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 this yeah, is yeah. where your freedom is. Yeah. But, you know, it's just one of those things of where uh, it's, it's Well, it's also a big thing. Because like the tournament, I didn't know this. I don't, I don't even know the sponsor's name. But I know it's the Tournament of Champions. I know it's Another Hawaii. big thing I feel Hyundai. like is... Was it Hyundai? It was, it was in previous years. Do, does golf... And this this might be the last thing you can talk about because the camera battery is probably going to die. <laughs> but uh, in golf, do they have like all sponsors and stuff? Or is it like Hyundai is the sponsor? If BMW is doing... Uh, it runs a tournament, then they might highlight a whole a part three and have a car behind it you win. So that was something I saw in a Jeff stream. But no. That's what I'm saying. So it's I very said, ex- much more exclusive. Like, like you're not going to see no, the sponsor, the no, if, you're, if you're the sponsor of the tournament, you got everything. that's what you're seeing. Exactly. You're not seeing so Dark then, Horse other sponsors. Because right now, the Pro Tour is the one setting all this stuff up because they have to set it up for a little bit for Infinite, a little bit for this company, a little bit for Jomez doing yeah. spots. But that's just because that's the only way they can make the money they need. They have to do that in the time being. Yeah. But I think in the future, I think that's where a big separation comes is like, if we sponsor an event and we are like, we're the sponsor, we, get we are like, but we're, 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 we're so, so I think there's a difference though. There's a difference between the tournament sponsor and then, you know, the PJ Tour has sponsors for food. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. drinks. So and you, like, you will all, see them. But I'm yeah. saying on course stuff. I think that's where a big oh, difference. Oh, on course, it's PJ Tour or the tournament sponsor. Exactly. You're that's not gonna saying. see. You're not gonna see some random sponsor on one hole. But I did talk to Jeff Spring. And I said one of the weirdest things to me is Ace Pots. I think that's like a very like <laughs> lower tier tournament feel. 
Like, if I'm playing in, like, a tournament that wants to have the prestige and wants to have the professionalism, putting money into an ace pot is very strange. Yeah. This is like a side bet. Well, there shouldn't be side betting. Why are you betting said betting a, in yeah, your... <laughs> in a PGA. You think sport? LeBron is side betting before a game? It's like, hey, guys. <laughs> hey. Definitely illegal. That's what we're doing. We're side betting. Well, not really, because LeBron you're, would be betting on, the, like... No, 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 no. Hey. No, no, no. It's the same thing. You're betting. You're betting right now against everyone saying, "Hey, I'll put five bucks in that I make an ace." And it's the same thing as LeBron saying, "I'll put five bucks in that I make a half court shot." It's the same exact thing. There's not. What's the difference? That the, the he's affecting a whole team, and you're affecting yourself. Like I, I don't think if golf had an ace pot, it'd be weird. It would. I mean, it's Why? a little. It's also a little less. And you choose right if you want to or not. There's no other money riding on it. Like there's not like disc golf gambling. I think I think it's weird. I just think it's weird. It, I get it. It does seem. It's like a out strange of place. thing when I'm going to play a disc golf pro tour event and my main goal is to win the event. The guy goes, "Hey, you want to join the ace pot?" I'm like, "What? <laughs> Why not throw five bucks in? Your ace might get like a thousand bucks." I think you're. I think you're missing. Like, I don't care. I don't see where that affects anything at all. It's a weird thing. But what does it affect? Taking it away. How does it make it more or less professional? Because to a fan. Heck, I didn't even know Pro Tour had ace pot. I did not. It changes nothing to me. I don't know if the Pro Tour has it. I think, then what are we talking yeah, about? We're talking about like eight tiers. Okay, this point, eight I, tiers. I don't know. I don't think the Pro Tour has it. I don't care about it in any. Yeah, eight, like what's what does it affect? We're trying one step at a time. Okay, yeah. I just think I'm I'm I'm, not, I'm just saying it's a weird thing. There might be people out there that agree with me that it is weird when I'm showing up to my main goal is to win a tournament. And they're asking me if I want to put money in for an ace pot. That's all I'm saying. But I just want to know what it's weird. Like, that, why does it affect anything? What does it change? What? How does it improve the sport if we remove an ace pot? Oh, it doesn't. So what, I, I wasn't saying anything. But the thing I was talking about Jeff Spring, though, I was saying, hey, oh. I potentially might have some sponsorship connections with car companies. Mm. What were your What would be your thoughts of like rolling out a Genesis? I don't even know what cars they have, but like a sick Genesis car on like was in a seven day Genesis. Who like isn't a Genesis a not important. Who knows? Not important. Pretty sure but it's not, not important. USDGC isn't Disc Golf Pro Tour. I get it, but they have the iconic 17. Yeah. So you just roll that bad boy out. You put it on the water in the right back, right and, it's, it. and it's sitting there. And if someone aces, they get that. Like to me, that's to me that's a cooler thing than an ace pot. That, that was what I was trying. Five bucks in. That's right. No, everyone has it. It but would like, be way more expensive to do that in disc golf though, because in ball golf it's pretty cheap to do that. Because no, it's not have, expensive. It's it's not in ball golf because oh, the odds of you making a whole one. The insurance one, on yeah, it. the insurance. Didn't and, think about that. Right in disc golf, the odds of an ace on seventeen are so much higher than an ace. You're right. You're right. You right. just put it on a very hard hole. Yeah, it would have to be on a really hard hole, and it would still be a lot more. Expensive. Maybe it's a smaller car. Yeah, because I've smaller talked. To, I brought that up before, and I think it was my dad or somebody who was like, "Well, you got to think about the chance of that actually happening in disc golf." But right. my buddy did it. My buddy did it at a charity event. He didn't have to pay for it. Yeah, well, like, think about it. I mean, yeah, if you're BMW and you're, like, everybody's going to see that car and the chance of it happening are next to nothing, it's free advertising, then the risk is probably worth it for them. Because they can put it out and... I'm just saying... They can put, it, they can put their car out there and that, that, could, that could be a potential for future... I mean, I agree. It's definitely... I mean, would, in this golf, it might be smarter to put, like, a score thing on it. Score thing? You shoot a certain... You no, shoot 18 that's under. That's, <laughs> nobody wants to see that. They want to see it go in and then they jump on the hood of the car. <laughs> And they, they drive That's off. That's the dumbest thing ever. It's not some objective. I was trying to make it more off. whatever. I was trying to change the probability. No, out of that. Grow up. <laughs> <laughs> I just keep using that one ever since you said it to me in the video. Do you want to... Grow I was just trying to change the probability. The final thing, do you want to tell people your thoughts on aces and disc golf? Thank you guys so much for watching. We will be uh, back here next week with another <laughs> weekly is podcast. Is that a Patreon only? Uh, uh, take? Maybe I'll give it on Patreon. I don't even really have a take. He just thinks I have a take. No, you do have a take. You force a take on me. No, no, no. Force uh, a take on me. No. I'm being bullied into a corner. Absolutely not. All right. Uh, let us know in the comments down below whether you agree with us, you disagree with us, you think we're crazy, or you think we're amazing. Really, any of your opinions, I would love to hear them. Also, if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, go ahead and leave a review. Um, we How many do we got? I think we have 120 something. Let's get to 200. Let's do it. Let's get to 200. Yeah. Uh, so even if you're not on Apple Podcast, head over there, leave a review. Whether you love us, whether we're trash, we read them all and we appreciate all of them. Um, and also leave the comments down below. You know, we still are in the middle of the off season. We didn't talk much about moves. I think there'll be some more moves coming up that we can talk about more as that happens. But 
outside of moving from like different companies, moves, moves. moves. Um, outside of like movement with that, let us know what other topics you'd like to see in this off season. And um, is there anything else you're gonna say as a final goodbye, Brody? Uh, the ten thousand uh, member giveaway is going down on the Discord very soon. Yeah. And you got to be a member of the Discord to see it, <sighs> and to. It's pretty good. Chance of winning it. It's a disc of mine and it's a disc of Paul's. So yeah. it should be pretty nice. That's pretty fire. Yeah. So, all right, Matt, guys, we will talk to you. Next week.